The PC75B Year of the Tiger keyboard from Akko is definitely a statement piece, and you'll either love the look of this keyboard, or you'll hate it. This is the first keyboard in their PC line of pre-built, and while there are aspects of this keyboard that perform really well, there are some glaring issues that they definitely need to address in future releases. For transparency, Echo sent this keyboard out for review, but that doesn't affect my opinion in any way and they didn't see any part of this video before it went live. This keyboard retailed for $120, which I think is a very good deal, as I don't think you can get an exploded 75% keyboard with a knob for that low of a price point. I usually don't cover the outside packaging much, but I mean, the art on these is beautiful. My camera really doesn't do it justice. It has art of a tiger and a clouded temple on one side and a tiger paw surrounding the Chinese character for tiger on the other. It's really nice looking art and they definitely went all out with it. Inside the box, you get the keyboard wrapped in PE foam with a dust cover on it, as well as a manual, 2.4 gigahertz dongle, lilac keycap puller, and a matching red USB-C cable. Again, we see Echo failed to provide any type of switch puller, which can be a pretty big inconvenience for beginners. This keyboard is made entirely out of polycarbonate, hence the PC name, and it's all in red. The case, keycaps and even the polycarbonate plate too. It features a big exploded 75% layout like their mod 007, but the knob in this keyboard is much bigger. It's made of metal and while the product picture showed that it's reflective, it's actually fully matte in person. Nice tactility, but there isn't any function when it's pressed down, which I would have liked to see. The other difference with their mod 007 is that this keyboard has an F13 key, which is very rare to see, especially on a budget pre-built like this. The front case height is 20 millimeters tall, which is the same as my KBD67 Lite, and I personally would recommend using a wrist rest as it may be too tall to be used comfortably without one. The bezels are very thick on this keyboard, and I think I would have liked them to be thinner as this is a very big keyboard. There is tons of dampening inside this keyboard. There's silicone in the case like we saw on the 3098B, PCB foam, and a silicone sheet under each switch, similar to the PE foam mod. We saw this on the Apple Maker Lite, but Echo covers more area with their sheet, which makes it more effective, but at a major cost, which I'll get into later. The USB-C connection isn't center mounted, but it's placed in between the F8 and F9 keys, which I don't mind. But what I do mind is that the opening fits the stock cable very tightly, and my high star coiled cables do not fit in this, so be careful if you want to use aftermarket cables. There is per key RGB on this keyboard and underglow RGB LEDs as well since the polycarbonate case material does let light through it. But because the case is all red, the cooler colors are very hard to see so it's best to keep the underglow on red. There are three LEDs on the right hand side which are indicators for caps lock, the battery level, and wind key lock. I always prefer to have the RGB off since I like the look of the keycaps a lot and I feel like the RGB takes away from that. Speaking of the keycaps, these are either the reason you bought this board or why you're staying far away from it. It's not for everyone. Personally, I really like the keycaps on this board and it's why I wanted to take a look at it in the first place. These are PBT die sub keycaps and JDA profile and there are tiger related symbols all over the keyboard, including on the arrow keys. Most of the alphas have striped ends which represent the tiger tails. If they don't have striped ends, it's because they chose to add something else like the paw on the D, an eye on the O. The mods feature the same design we saw in the packaging, but broken up between the keys, with the spacebar featuring the tiger itself. Whilst the design of these keycaps are absolutely beautiful, they aren't perfect. All of the darker keys have light bleed at the top, and some of the legending isn't completely centered, which is a real shame, as I had the same issue on my 3098B, and I had hoped that they addressed it in this board, but I guess they haven't managed to fix it yet. Taking off the keycaps, we see that this keyboard has the Echo CS Wine Reds, which are currently only available through this board, but I believe that these will be out sometime in March. These are very similar to the Rose Reds in terms of specs, except that the Wines have a full 4mm total travel distance and a bottom out force of 45 grams, while the Rose Reds have 3.5mm of travel distance with a bottom out force of 55 grams. These are factory lube, and while they do feel pretty smooth stock, there's still some scratch and it sounds very harsh, so I recommend lubing these further or swapping them out. 
There isn't any spring ping with these though. Like we saw on their previous boards, this keyboard is hot toppable, but while the product listing says that they have support for 5 pin switches, the silicone sheet does not have cutouts for them. So this keyboard does not support 5 pin switches, which I think was a major oversight on Echo's part. I know that many people have been asking to see south facing LEDs in Echo keyboards, and while this keyboard has north facing LEDs, they have an upcoming DIY kit that does have them. Hopefully I can get one to review once they're out, but I'll have to ask Akko about that. Here's how the PC75B sounds stock. Overall, this keyboard sounds pretty good. It's very muted because of all of the dampening inside it, so there's no ping or case resonance, but the spacebar still has some hollowness in it. The stabilizers are factory loot pretty heavily, my left shift and enter were pretty mushy when I was first using it, but there's still some ticking on my spacebar and enter, so while I would give these stabilizers a pass, I would recommend to re-lube these. The typing feel is pretty stiff, but that's to be expected since this is a top mount keyboard. The wireless connectivity is pretty good, switching to Windows and pressing function function and why lets you use a keyboard in 2.4 gigahertz but in 2.4 gigahertz mode i had issues where a key would stick as well as certain inputs not registering at all and i never had these issues on the 3098b only this keyboard which is very disappointing in bluetooth mode i had no issues at all it's pretty weird to see that the bluetooth outperformed the 2.4 gigahertz but that's the experience that i had and all of this is powered with a 3000 milliamp hour battery both the product listing and the manuals say that this keyboard is compatible with the Echo Cloud software for remapping keys and the audio visualizer RGB effect, but when I downloaded the software, I wasn't able to register the keyboard in any of the three modes, so I was stuck with the default layout. I think that this keyboard is catered to a very specific audience, those who like the look of this keyboard or those who celebrate Lunar New Year. The PC75B on its own is pretty average. I think that the layout and overall build quality is fantastic for the price of $120, but the silicone sheets not allowing 5 pin switches to be used, the Echo Cloud software not recognizing this keyboard, and the connectivity issues in 2.4 GHz wireless leads me to believe that Echo needs to make revisions of this keyboard before they release another one in their PC line. That being said, this keyboard is still a very solid performer especially with the CS Wine Red. I do hope that they release these separately very soon alongside the keycaps because I think the Echo pushing the boundaries with keycap designs ultimately benefits the consumers and I wish the Echo would keep innovating in keycap designs instead of just cloning GMK sets. But I think they might be starting to catch on to that since they just discontinued their red and blue samurai ASA keycap sets and they just released five new original keycap designs and I'm all for it. Unfortunately, this keyboard is unavailable to purchase and I don't think that they'll be restocking it since Lunar New Year has already passed, so there won't be any links in the description today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.